Welcome, YouTubers. Sorry this video is getting up a little bit late today. Uh, however, the machine that I normally do my editing on uh, kind of had to go in and get repaired yesterday. It's finished. I've just now got to go pick it up this morning or this afternoon, I guess. But at any rate, today we're going to be discussing some advanced mapping options that you have within CH Control Manager, in particular the ability to set up additional DirectX devices. Remember last time, in the first video, we set in my case, the CH Fighter Stick, the CH Pro Throttles, and then I have the Pro Pedals down here below, up as one combined device with eight axes and 32 buttons. But let's say you're playing a game that can recognize multiple joystick inputs. In theory, you may not even need CH Control Manager. You could just bind everything it recognizes, but sometimes it's limited to it'll only recognize two joysticks or four joysticks before it starts spazzing out. Star Citizen starts spazzing out after three or four controllers right now. Uh, Elite Dangerous, I don't know, I've just always used CH Control Manager. But I have this configured as two separate devices. And let me show you how this works. I'm going to go ahead and load my D uh, Elite Dangerous profile map. Now, notice over here you have this Direct X device and every button I'm hitting, it's recognizing it as essentially, it says CM device 1, think joystick 1. Until I go to the mini stick. Now it says CM device 2, X, Y axes. In game, it recognizes my mini stick as being a separate joystick, which is fantastic because this is what I have mapped to my strafing thrusters, my vertical and lateral strafing thrusters. And it's very easy to do. All you do is, you know, you, you tap on it as we tap the button or whatever you want to trade or uh, program, and then you can set it up to, it will allow you to turn this into up to 16 different devices plus be recognized or send the signal to the computer that it's a mouse or nothing. Now, for an example, I have this set as a mouse X and Y axes for Falcon BMS. That's how it's mapped in my Falcon BMS profile, so that I can move the cursor around on screen. Um, also, it comes in handy for needing to adjust radar um, declination and, and um, well, adjust the radar settings. We'll just leave it at that. Um, so, that's one thing you can do. Set up multiple devices, or have it treat it as many different joysticks or controllers if you wanted to, uh, provided the game recognizes it. Another option, um, you know, you can see centered reverse would inverse the axes. Um, you have mode one. Now we'll go into various mode programming as well as macro programming whenever we cover CMS, or um, basically scripting, CM editor. Um, this is what the scripting thing looks like, but we'll be covering that in the next tutorial. Because really, I feel programming and setting up the, the macros and things like that, they should all go together. But let's look at how you double up functions. Essentially, use shift. Now, you can only do this on the sticks. I do not believe... Oh, it will allow you to do it on the... Uh, I take that back. You can also do it on the throttle. What you have to do is you have to set one of your controls to be the designated shift key. Traditionally, you use button number four on the joystick, on the fighter stick. It's this little pinky switch down here. Now, if you have the combat stick, you do not have this little pinky, I believe. But on the, con or on the um, flight stick, on the combat stick and on the fighter stick, you have this pinky switch down here. To set this up properly, you should first go here, set it to none, because this is going to become essentially a special key. You click shift. Now, whenever you press shift and go into the game, it will perform a different action. For example, right now, if I pull the trigger, this is button one. But let's say on the shift action, I want it to say it's device one, button four. So now if I ha hold this button down, and then go to that button in game, it will turn off my flight control. That's how I have it currently mapped to in game. So, guns, flight control. This can come in handy if you especially want to say guns, missile. You know, press it then and then it locks on and fires missile. Uh, 
if you know you don't have enough buttons over here that's what you do with a shift there's one other very or actually two other special buttons that you may considering may consider not mapping anything to because I have special functionality within the joystick if you are going to be using multiple modes and when you set up your program to do this and again we'll be discussing this more in depth next time in the next video so you have mode one two and three this button here button number three also needs to be set to none the reason being is anytime it's pressed notice down here how the color of this light changes it's in essentially mode one now mode two mode three so if you have this set to a function uh... let's say choose your the target in the center of the screen when you go to press this if you're using multiple modes not only is it going to target what you have on the screen the first time then it's going to put all your sticks and stuff into different modes well where could be a per place you're going to use this let's say in star citizen because of the way um, comstat, well not necessarily it's comstat, but coupled and decoupled mode uh, flight works. As of right now, it messes up your axes. Uh, what used to be roll and, um, and yaw become reversed when you're in decoupled mode. So maybe you want to say, okay, and you can set this up programmably, we'll do this next time, hit a button, go into mode 2, and mode 2 it changes what axes this stick is recognized in then when you hit the button again it goes to mode one and uh... returns this to yaw in my case if i were going to do this um, i would want this to be the r-axis in uh... star citizen but right now i'm gonna leave it x-axis um, so that's just kind of the basics of the advanced things you can do in Control Manager for setting up multiple devices uh, or having this recognized as multiple devices. Now, should you, you know, this is kind of personal preference and Elite Dangerous. Elite Dangerous is perfectly uh, capable of recognizing all of these devices independently. However, I go ahead and use a CH Control Manager map. You know, that kind of goes up to you. Um, mapping tends to work a little bit better, I think, uh, with Control Manager. It gives you a little bit fi more finite control. For example, you know, you can map your uh, your curves for axes. And that's how you do. I keep it linear. I prefer to adjust my flight, my muscle memory to the stick that I'm using as opposed to trying to make the stick um, perform the way I want it to. But that being said, a lot of people do like to adjust uh, from a linear to an S-curve. Um, in their profiles and there's nothing wrong with that again it's what works best for you so that's going to be this week's kind of um, CH control manager tutorial um, I'm gonna probably cut this one off here try to get this uploaded next week next week's gonna be probably a very long um, episode in fact I may end up separating this into a four-part series and have next week when we discuss macro um, and it, it might just be basics of CM editor uh, control uh, the, no I didn't really want to download the stick but you know okay we'll be dealing with the CM editor uh, control manager and uh, editor as well as mapping macros and things of that nature so again Elite Dangerous not so much, but in Star Citizen, I have it where I hit uh, this button right here, and a number of things happen. It just decouples, uh, turns off G soft, uh, G safe, turns off comms tab. Uh, as long as I'm holding that button, as soon as I release it, uh, on release, it basically undoes what it just did and returns me back to normal coupled flight. Um, Conversely, I have it for whenever I hold that button in, um, yeah, in Diaspora, it toggles glide mode. Well, as long as I'm holding it, it uh, activates glide. So, at any rate, this video is turning out to be about 10 minutes long. Um, I hope that this kind of explains some of the more advanced things you can do with Control Manager. Um, to the audience. If you have anything that I glossed over, 
didn't quite make any sense, please tell me in the comment section and then I can go back and answer it there as well as maybe show it in the next video uh, since we have at least one, probably two more of these to go. Um, because I will probably do the basics of CM scripting editing and some macro controls next week and then the week after that will be here's some just wild zany stuff you can do with uh, the, the script editor. So. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, uh, you know, as well as give me likes and share with your friends. Um, and I'll see you next week.